Today we're going to talk about section 5 through 8, which discusses different models of the atoms. So we've already talked about the Rutherford model, the Bohr model, and then how electrons kind of behave in the atom, and we're going to continue our discussion of how do electrons actually work in an atom. Okay, so we ended our discussion last time talking about atomic spectra with hydrogen, and that it would jump, electrons would jump orbits, and then jump back and give off energy, and you would see that energy as light. And so the Bohr model says that electrons move in circular orbits. And these orbits correspond to allowed energy levels. So when the electron gained energy, it could jump further away from the nucleus. So electrons jump to a different orbit by absorbing or emitting photons with exactly that energy content. When they emit them, we see it as light, and they jump back down towards the nucleus. When they absorb photons, they jump away from the nucleus. The only problem with this model is that it only works for hydrogen because hydrogen only has one electron, so it didn't have these multiple orbits to jump to. So we had to find some other way to explain this phenomenon with other elements because we see atomic spectra for every element. And so we looked at the wave mechanical model. Two scientists kind of came up with this idea, uh, de Broglie and Schrodinger, and they were from France and Austria. And they said that the electron can behave as particles with the photons and as waves, like light can. And so they said that electrons have both of these properties. And so that allowed them to have this atomic spectra. And they said that the electron state would be described by an orbital, which is not the same as an orbit. And so we have to kind of keep them very clear. The problem with this model is we said, okay, they're in this orbital, but we don't really know where an electron is specifically at any point in time. And all we can do is calculate the probability that an electron will be in a certain place. So we don't know when the electron is there or how it gets there. We just say, okay, 90% of the time it's in this location, and we can get different shapes based on where we think the electrons are occurring. And so we have what are called probability maps. So here is uh, de Broglie's assumption of the Bohr model. So we've still got this orbit, but we are saying that these electrons are following these wave patterns. And so this is where we're talking about how an electron can behave as a particle and a wave. And then um, we said that we can predict with 90% you know, where the electron is most of the time. So here's our nucleus. And then for this particular atom, we're saying that most of the electrons are in this kind of ring shape around the nucleus. But you can see we've got some little outliers here. And so we're saying 90% of the time, they're going to be in this shape. Okay, and that's where we get the sphere shape, which we'll talk about in a minute. Here's another one. So we've got a concentration of electrons in the center and then electrons kind of are on the outside. It's like, um, you know, if you see those Canadian geese with the tag around their neck, they're being tagged, and then they look at where they fly to. And so maybe at night, you would see a majority of geese, like, in a cornfield. It's kind of the same thing. Okay, so let's look at um, the hydrogen orbitals. So the probability of finding an electron is going to decrease as you get further from the nucleus. So if we look at those probability maps. And we can see that as we get further from the nucleus, there are less electrons out here. So the edge of the orbital is fuzzy. There's really no defined size. Okay, So unlike an orbit where we said it specifically follows this path, an orbital is not quite the same. And we can have different levels of energy and shapes of orbitals. So what we're calling the 1s orbital is a sphere shape, and it contains 90% of the total electron probability. So 90% of the time, electrons are in this shape, in a 1s orbital. And this describes hydrogen's ground state. This is the lowest energy orbital that you can have. And so if it's lowest energy, that's ground state. So when an atom absorbs energy, it's going to transfer to a different kind of orbital with a different shape. So it's going to go to a higher energy state. Okay, so unlike the Bohr model where we said it just jumped to a different orbital, a, a different orbit, um, we're going to a different orbital, which is a different amount of energy, a different shape, a different letter, all kinds of things like that. Okay, so we have what are called principal energy levels. These are discrete energy levels in the atom, and we label them with an integer or a number. So if you look along the side of your periodic table, your period should be labeled 1, 2, 3 through 7. Those represent the principal energy levels. 
each principal energy level gets divided into sublevels. So we've got an overall amount of energy, and then we're dividing it into sublevels. So we're going to go through all of those right now. So principal energy level 1 has one sublevel or one specific type of orbital. Okay, and that's the 1s. So 1 represents the principal energy level, and the s represents the shape, okay, or this particular sublevel. And in this case, the shape is a sphere. Okay, let's look at the next one. So we have, because we're at principal energy level 2, we have two sublevels. The first one is 2s. It's a sphere shape just like 1s, only now it's, it's bigger. It can contain more energy. Okay, and then we go to our second sublevel, which is called 2p. This has three orbitals. So we've got principal energy level, sublevel, and now orbitals. S has one orbital. P has three. Okay, and they're called 2px, 2py, and 2pz. Okay, and because we are in a different sublevel, we have a different shape. These are lobe shapes. They kind of look a little bit like bowling pins. Okay, the x, y, or z just tells along which axis the lobes are directed. So we're talking about the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis, which is in and out of the point. Okay, so here's a picture of the two of the um, two principal energy level. So we're going to call that PEL. Here's our 2s. It's sphere-shaped. Okay, notice it is taking up space in all three dimensions. Whereas here with the 2p, we have 2px, 2py, and 2pz. And they're only located along one axis. Okay, and here's that lobe shape. So most of the electrons are going to be found within this shape in that sublevel. Okay, let's move on to the third one. Okay, well, just like in principal energy level 2, we've got to have a 3s. Okay, and it's a sphere shape just like 1 and 2s, but it's bigger. Okay, and because we're principal energy level 3, we have three sublevels, so 3s. The next one is going to be the same as PEL2. We're going to have 3p. So we've got 3px, 3py, 3pz, shaped just like 2b, but again, larger. And then our third sublevel is a new one. This is 3d. So 3d has five orbitals. So if we move from one orbital for any of the s's, three orbitals for any of the p's, now we're at five orbitals for any of the d's. And these have very different shapes, so you don't really have to know what they look like. I'm just going to show you a picture. Okay, so five different uh Sublevel or energy levels or orbitals. Okay, and we've got this one's kind of my favorite, looks kind of like a donut. And then we've got these different uh, shapes. And so electrons are going to be located within these shapes. Okay, so the last one that we're going to discuss is principal energy level four. So just like one, two, and three, we've got to have four sublevels. The first one being 4s. This is the lowest energy within principal energy level four. Okay, it's again a sphere but it's bigger than 1s, 2s, and 3s. So remember, all s's only contain one orbital, and that's the sphere shape. Then we go to 4p. Okay, 4p, just like 2p and 3p, has three orbitals, okay, and they're shaped just like 3p, but again, they're larger. Okay, then we're going to go to 4d. Okay, d, just like in 3d, has five orbitals, same shapes but larger, and then our new one is 4f. F has seven orbitals, and we're not going to worry about the shape. In fact, I couldn't even find a picture. They're really kind of crazy and weird. So we've got S has one, P has three orbitals, D has five orbitals, and F has seven orbitals. And we will, when we talk about electron configuration, we will relate this to the periodic table. Okay, so this all relates into the wave mechanical model. So as energy levels are added, we're adding more orbitals, right? As you saw, we went from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. We did S, and then we had S and P, and then we had S, P, and D, and then S, P, D, and F. So we keep adding all these orbitals. The greater the distance from the nucleus, the more space there is and the more orbitals we will find. So there's more room for all these electrons to be occupying away from the nucleus. As the level number increases, the principal energy level, the average distance of the electron from the nucleus increases. So 1 is very close to the nucleus. As we go to 2s and 2p, 
and 3s and 3p and 3d and all fours, we're getting further from the nucleus. And they have more energy if they're further from the nucleus. So that makes sense. It all goes together. Okay, so some things to really remember. The number indicates the principal energy level. And as we get to a bigger number, we have more energy and further from the nucleus. The letter tells you the shape of the orbital, S, P, D, or F. And the subscript indicates which axis it is on. This relates mainly to P, um, but it is present in all the other ones as well. Okay, last little bit we need to talk about is that electrons, besides the not knowing where they are all the time and taking up all these shapes, they also spin. Okay, and we use arrows to indicate the direction of their spin. Two electrons must be spinning in opposite directions to be in the same orbital, and we indicate this with arrows. Okay, and this relates to what's called the Pauli exclusion principle, which says that an atomic orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons and they must have opposite spins. So remember those orbitals are the 1s, the 2s, the 2px, the 2py, the 2pz. Each of those can only contain two electrons and they have to spin opposite directions. Okay, so let's just review real quick. Principal energy levels are whole numbers and they indicate the amount of energy. And as we go up in number, we go up in energy. Energy level increases as the value of n increases. Principal energy level contains one or more types of orbitals, and these are those sublevels, s, p, d, or f. The number of sublevels in a given principal energy level is equal to n. So if we're in level 2, it means we have two sublevels. If we're in level 4, we have four sublevels, those being s, p, d, and f. Okay, here's a chart that hopefully kind of organizes everything for you. Um, here's the n value, and then the number of sublevels, and in parentheses, the number of orbitals in each sublevel. Okay, so 2, we have a 2s and a 2p, 3 orbitals within 2p, 5 orbitals within d, okay, 7 orbitals within f. Okay, so this is something you can use a periodic table. You don't have to memorize it, but you need to understand where these things are coming from. Okay, the end is used to label the orbitals of the given principal energy level followed by a letter to indicate shape or type of orbitals, so like 1s, 2s, 2p, those kind of type of things. The orbital can be empty, or it can contain one or two electrons, but it can never have more than two, and the two electrons, if it has two, they have to have opposite spin. The shape of the orbital doesn't give any details about electron movement. It just indicates the probability dis distribution for the electron in that orbital. You don't know how it gets there still or how long it stays. We only know that's kind of like the probability distribution. Okay, so some of this is a little kind of out there. Electrons are a little weird to understand. Um, here's some practice to help you, and we will discuss these in class, and you can to work on them. All right, have a good day.